Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the algebra that lies behind canceling in a fraction. Uh, incorrect canceling is actually one of the most common errors students make in algebra. So by showing you the algebra behind the canceling, what's going on when you're crossing those common factors out, I think it'll help you avoid those uh, common canceling errors. Okay, and I'm going to start with a numerical fraction. Suppose we were going to reduce 12 fifteenths. Now, commonly what students do is they find a common factor, greatest common factor of 3, and they do something like this. They mentally divide 12 by 3 and they cross it out and write a 4, and they mentally divide the 15 by the 3 and cross it out and make a 5. And then your final answer is 4 fifths. And that's correct. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to explain what's going on when you do that. Um, you can actually avoid crossing things out by factoring the 12 into 4 times 3 and factoring the 15 into 5 times 3. And then you can split this single fraction into a product of two fractions, 4 over 5 times 3 over 3. And once you do that, you're going to notice that 3 divided by 3 is 1, so this is 4 fifths times 1 which is simply 4 fifths. So that's the math behind canceling here, is that these common factors are found, these threes. Then they're split off into a single fraction so that they can be divided to produce a 1. And then multiplying by 1 doesn't change the other fraction. So that is what's really going on when you're crossing these things out. Let's carry over this idea to some algebraic examples. Okay, suppose you had to reduce this fraction, x squared minus x minus 6 over x squared minus 9. Now, you actually cannot cancel anything right now. A very common mistake students make is to simply look for something in the numerator that matches something in the denominator and cross it out, like those x squareds. Those don't actually cross out because you cannot go through those steps we did earlier. There's no way to do it. For example, this is not equal to x squared over x squared times negative x minus 6 over negative 9. You cannot split those x squareds off because they're not factors. They're not multiplying the negative x minus 6 or the negative 9. So we actually cannot do that. So what we do have to do here is we have to factor the numerator and the denominator so that we can find some common factors. So let's take that trinomial in the numerator and split it up into a couple of binomials. And we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6 but add up to negative 1. And negative 3 and positive 2 do the job. And now the difference of squares in the denominator can be factored into x minus 3 times x plus 3. Now we see these common factors, these x minus 3's here. So we can cross them out, and here's why they cross out. It's because you can write that fraction as a product of two fractions, and then the first fraction is equal to 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. And then finally, when you multiply something by 1, it doesn't change it. So we get x plus 2 over x plus 3 is our final answer. And I never crossed anything out along the way. But of course, it is correct to cross out those x minus 3s. All right, let's look at another example. Let's suppose we had to reduce x squared minus 3 times x plus 6 over x minus 6 times x plus 6. Again, it's a big temptation for students here to cross out those x plus 6's because they look alike. But they actually don't cancel. There's no way to do what we did above. We cannot separate this. This is not x squared minus 3 over x minus 6 times x plus 6 over x plus 6. The reason it's not is because 
this product right here, if you multiply those fractions together, you do get that denominator x minus 6 times x plus 6, but you don't get this numerator that we originally had. When you multiply those numerators together, you get the quantity x squared minus 3 times the quantity x plus 6, which is different. Having those parentheses around that x squared minus 3 makes a difference. So that's why we cannot cancel those x plus 6's. It cannot be separated off like that. So what I'm going to do here is factor the numerator first. So to factor it, I have to distribute the minus 3. So I have x squared minus 3x minus 18 over x minus 6 times x plus 6. And now I'm ready to factor that trinomial in the numerator. Okay, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 18 and add up to negative 3. And negative 6 and positive 3 do the job. And that's over my denominator. And now I do have a common factor, this x minus 6 over x minus 6 here. Those do cancel. They cross out, and I'm going to show you why. They cross out because this can be split into the product of two fractions. And that first fraction is equal to 1. And when I multiply 1 times the second fraction, I just get the second fraction. So the final answer there is x plus 3 over x plus 6. Okay, I want to look at uh, one more example. It's going to be a more extreme example of this uh, avoidance of crossing things out. Let's suppose I had to reduce 8a to the 10th, b to the 4th, over 12a to the 8th, b to the 7th. Now, you can go right ahead and start crossing things out here if you do it properly, but I'm going to show you the algebra behind it. And what I'm going to do is factor the 8 into 4 times 2 and the 12 into 4 times 3 so that I can see these common factors of 4 here. Now, the a to the 10th and the a to the 8th, you probably normally handle those by subtracting the exponents. 10 minus 8 is 2. And you get an a squared in the numerator, and that's correct. Um, I wanted to avoid doing that, though, and show you uh, the method we've learned above. The a to the tenth can be factored into a to the eighth times a squared. These exponents add up to ten. You've got eight factors of a and two more factors of a, creating the ten factors of a. And I did that so that I would have these matching a to the eighths. Now, I'll write the b to the fourth down in the numerator. The b to the seventh in the denominator can be factored as b to the third times b to the fourth. So that now I have these matching b to the fourths. Okay, now I'm going to separate this into a product of a bunch of fractions. 4 over 4 times a to the eighth over a to the eighth times b to the fourth over b to the fourth. So I just group those common factors together, and then what I have left is 2a squared over 3b cubed. So this single fraction above is the product of these four fractions. Remember, multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter what order you put your factors in. All right, and now each one of the first three fractions is equal to 1. That's why those cancel because they're dividing out to a 1. And when you multiply all these together, you simply get 2a squared over 3b cubed. Okay, once again, I'm not advocating you do all of these steps every time. I just wanted you to be aware that this, this act of canceling here really amounts to a division resulting in a 1. Okay, and if you can't create that, you can't get that division to come out to 1 like that, then you can't cancel. Those x plus 6's don't cancel. We saw that up above. These x squareds don't cancel either. Okay, hopefully this helped. Thanks for watching.